Hi, it's Gwen Fox, and today I thought we would talk a little bit about shapes. Now, shapes are, particularly in abstracts, shapes make or break a painting. But now in landscapes, everything is a shape. I used to think that a mountain was a mountain, and a meadow was a meadow, and a building was the building. But it isn't. Sometimes the mountain goes into the meadow and to the building. That is a shape. It took me a long time to really figure this out. And I had such trouble with shapes that I did a notebook of shapes that I liked because there are, you make different shapes than I make different shapes. And really the best way to find out how you make your shapes and what are your shapes is to start tearing paper. I kid you not, collage is the best way to find your shapes because you're going to find, if you do it with somebody else, it's really interesting because what you're going to find is that your shapes are a little different and you tear different. This means that this is your style. But there are shapes that are kind of boring and you don't want them. So what shapes are those? It is a circle, a perfect circle. That's not a perfect circle, but it's going to do. Anyway, a perfect circle, look how boring that is. Why? Is There are two reasons. Number one, it, it's boring because there's no uh, variation in it at all. And that's not what you want. The other reason that this is a bad shape, and it's the same with the other two shapes, is that there's no way out. If you're going to do a circle, do a circle like this. Um, give your, or it doesn't have to have this, but give a way out. The eye needs to get out, and that's what you really want. Now, what's the other one? The other shape that's not good um, here, let me tear this first so I can get this for you, But because I was going to get a bigger pad of uh, newsprint, but I've used it all. I love newsprint, by the way, guys, just in case you hadn't figured that one out. <laughs> I love newsprint. <clears throat> Let's just do it on this. Now, Another shape that's really not good is a square. Same reason, look how boring it is. It's just boring. Now, if you're going to do a square and you really need one, and I do a lot of squares, you're gonna need to do one so that it's got some, it's got a little bit of area out. Now, how do you do that? You do that with value. You do that with just edges. You do it with whatever it is that you need to do it with in order to make it work. But you need, a, the eye needs to be able to get out. Otherwise, it's gonna stay in there and the rest of your painting, nobody's gonna see because they can't get out of the square. Now, we're talking about this as, as uh, big shapes. Now, we're not talking about these shapes in uh, the center of interest because you can have little shapes there, but still, even with that at your center of interest, put a way out, just a little way out. The other shape that's really boring, and in, it's the triangle. The triangle, same distance throughout. This is so boring, but they will there is another reason why this should not be. And it is the fact that triangles are very difficult in a painting because it's it's got a point. Points are difficult. Like if you made this just a little triangle, um, like this part right here, it's still a triangle and it's still hard. It's very difficult to do. and. 
even if they're even if the triangle is this and and this you know it's a little different this is not as long as this it's still boring it's still boring and you can't get out of it now with every thing that i've said the, the interesting thing is that there is always a rule to break in art. Every single rule you can break in art. It's just how. And Diebenkorn was the one that loved to do triangles, and he did them beautifully, and they worked. They worked. They were gorgeous. And here is a picture of one of Diebenkorn's paintings uh, where he did the triangles leading to the chairs. It was wonderful. And then here's another one of a very simple table and flowers. Look at the simplicity of the shapes. This is awesome. Now, another artist that does beautiful shapes is Morago. He's an Italian artist. Um, Morago is someone I discovered when I went to Italy. I went over to see Afro's paintings, and Afro uh, is deceased, but was one of the top Italian uh, abstract painters. And, uh, and I discovered Morago. Morago is awesome, and I think you would really enjoy it. But now, look at his paintings. His paintings are large shapes big uh, value changes and so forth. So that's how he does his shapes. And, and his paintings, by the way, sell out before even the show starts. And, but then there's, there's um, Jackson Pollock. Now, Jackson Pollock didn't have shapes in these. What is this called? This is called, I think it's called the overall painting or overall method. And so that is the way that Jackson did his without shapes. And that's fine. It's the overall method. So anyway, I, I want to hear from you. I want to hear what you think about shapes because shapes are so important. Do you have trouble with them? And remember, the big shapes stay at the outer part of your painting. They're support shapes. And then your smaller shapes are, of course, in the center of interest. And I don't know if you've heard the old adage, it's papa bear, mama bear, baby bear. And so the big shapes are the big outside, then the medium, and then the little. So I hope this has helped because shapes are really important. So I want to know what you think. I want to know what's going on in your mind. So put a comment below. I will answer it. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so, because we have so much fun. Anyway, I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.